What's up, everyone? Welcome down to the vault again. What's happening? Because it is Hatriot all week long. We're doing your Hatriot all week long. We're in celebrating the fact that Hatriot is releasing their third record finally after five years finally. on July 26th. So as I'm talking to all of the members, we just talked to Costa. And next in line is my son, Mr. Cody Souza. What's up, Cody? What's happening, Pops? How are How you? How you doing? Good. Good to have you here. Chilling the hell out. How's it feel to have your new record out? Oh, it's pretty cool. I, so, I'm, I'm liking the feedback. Out, out. Nice. Yeah. You guys, watch my show on Big screen because it it looks better. You know, doesn't don't you think? If you yeah, watch it on I look your, a lot better on it big looks, screen. I agree too. Anyway, so finally, um, from Days into Darkness is going to drop next Friday. This yeah, coming it's coming Friday. Up. It's coming Friday. The unicorn is finally coming running in God, the middle I'm of the room. Full circle. And I'm um, like, I mean, I was sp I spoke. And Walter and I reviewed it uh, that everybody saw. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I sp I, you know I spoke to Costa and you people have seen that as well and um this one kicks motherfucking yeah. ass the uh, reviews have than, been good i, feel, I thought I, they were gonna slag you know them why, and you know though? what i'm talking I mean, about hey, good, you know. so good i mean it's easy to hate but if it's good it's good you can't yeah. hate on it. if you hate you look like a dipshit that's the fucking, bottom line is the musical speak you know, for itself you know, ultimately. And, and and it's good that it's coming out you know it, it and i think that had a lot to do with um you know Costa writing something hard, you coming into your own. We t I talked to Costa about obviously, you know the 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 guitar the the, the circle of guitar players. That oh, I call that the revolving door. The, All the, the interviews I've been doing for the last few weeks. The, the, it's the, Co hatred is Nicholas, me, and Costa. Yeah, right. if, whoever wants to be a part of it's welcome, but we're the three at the end of the well, day. Well, let's that, hope Kevin that, is going to be a solid. It sure seems like this it. year's model anyway. called Kevin. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> And this year's model. Oh, well, we I love am. him. He has. We've known him since he's been a little kid. Right, Remember, he's right. been tugging on your shirt for an autograph. Oh, as I'm going to get. Well, he's, he's. You know what I mean? So he's next up after yeah. you. He so seems the, the, you guys will get love some everyone of that. before him in each in their own way. But he seems the most interested, the most into yeah, it. So that's, that's I do I'm, pick on him a little much. He's like the little cousin brother I never had. You know what I mean? So, but he knows I'm fucking with him. And yeah, and he's, he's well. He's you know what? Time, I think it's so. out of excitement too. Yeah, Cody, and I think it. And he's really, you know into it because as a fan i remember meeting kevin he's like yeah Dude, I'm Nick's friend. Oh my God! There's your dad. You know, kind of thinking now. It's like, yeah. hey, Kevin, hey, what's up? There's it was a lot bigger of an idea to him than it is to me and Nick. And right. A lot well, of people online talk about that, and I'm all, yeah, I met James Headfield coming out the pisser at the Raider game, and I'm like, who the fuck is this dad's weird friend? You know what I mean? Yeah, and right. They were always just dad's goofy friends at that point. Yeah, right. As to where some people were totally weird on it, that like yeah. I knew the people that I knew, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Chuck Billy pushed me into a pool when he was drunk one time. You know what I mean? And it's like right. you're like what? You yeah, know, like, so well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're at Cody <laughs> Billy's graduation. Yeah. You're at barbecues at John Allen's house with yeah, everybody. Exactly. You know, so you guys was, are like, you know. I you, honestly you, respected them for the craft that they had, right? I mean, right. those were your friends, your friends. But, that, okay, but what I know. want you to do is talk about that as a kid. Yeah. As you were a kid growing up, because a lot of the, the comments I've seen, I know you and your brother see them. It's like, wow, it's so great to have your dad. What was that like? How cool yeah. was it? I mean, I mean, it wasn't all that real cool. All it was the time, same you know? thing, lovers and haters, right? right there was exactly. never in the middle that was like, people no. absolutely loved it or people yeah. were totally jealous right. and like, exactly. were assholes about it. Uh, which, you know, I just always let whatever I did, my craft at the time speak for itself because that would always get uh, attached to everything. Playing football, m my head coach was a fan of yours, right? right? So he wouldn't let anyone on the on the team have long hair except he knew that I played in a melodic death metal band so he let me have long hair, right. you know? And like, it's it's just kind of weird so that the, some kids will always gravitate against that but the fact that like whatever action it was spoke for itself, playing football, um, you know, being successful at work, whatever it ended up being, the sport of the time, skateboarding, Whatever, whatever I got myself into, like you know, it was always I was a cool side feature, but it was yeah. never what like you no, it know. Wasn't, it wasn't because people, yeah, it exactly, wasn't because exactly. It wasn't so, because even and being I in a band and shit, yeah. and I really didn't want that. I wanted you guys to have your own yeah. childhood, your own identity. I didn't want it to be the fact that oh, you know who his dad is, kind of a thing. Yeah. And, and that's going to happen in progression, especially oh, yeah. some of their yeah. fathers are fans, so oh, the yeah. kids are going to grow up. Even 1995, them. walking into first grade, you were the only young dad with like super long, long hair. hair. Exactly. I mean, we're in Pleasanton, in California, so a bunch of snurred, finkle, Total fucking conservative suit and business tie, and like, yeah. there I was, this little heavy metal rocker kid. Yeah, you know? exactly. So. Exactly. But, man, you know, your mother and I were young parents at that yeah. time, too. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it was like, you know, I'd... I think I was like 30 years old. They already had a yeah. kid that was in, in kindergarten. I think she was like 26 so, or 27. When you were born, right? 26. Yeah. yeah when you were oh, young. yeah. So first grade. You were yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. 
So crazy, crazy how that goes. So, yeah. um, you didn't. Nick was more metal out of the gate than you were. You had a. I knew this was going to come. Too bad. Out. I'm coming in. Too bad. My M&M I tell, face. Who I, didn't have an M&M I tell face. the truth here on the vault. I only speak the truth. Oh man. Your brothers in second grade pitches with Iron Maiden fucking t-shirts on, but I'm at what was it Tower Records buying the Marshall Mathers LP, <laughs> well, right? Yeah. Hey, you, you jammed it too. Don't, I did. Don't knock I'm it. I'm not knocking Eminem. <laughs> Fuck no. He's talented. Fucking A. And, yeah. and I like some of those songs. Yeah. Like Slim Shady, it was when I loved, we were into Kid Rock at that, that time. Kid Remember? Rock. Devil Without a Cause. Oh my God. And I thought it was because yeah. it was heavy and, and he was really It was like something new. Ruthless. I mean, not yeah. necessarily Eminem was just, you know, spitting faster lyrics, but yeah, Kid Rock was, that was, it was like that new metal kind of breakout era. Like that was like pre, that was like the, the, the pre-rapture before that, right? You know what I mean? But, um, yeah. but then we had that shitty little Hondo bass that sat around that. That was, yeah. that was, that was so, so my, my top best, heavy. My best you friend at the time me. wanted to play bass guitar, so I wanted to play to learn with him. I thought it would be cool if we played the same instrument. Who was that, Cody? Stefan. Remember Stefan Romanovich? Oh, that's right, Stefan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're looking, what's up, dude? Um, but... Yeah, at that point, he wanted to play bass guitar, so I, I somehow came across the bass first. I think it was your friend Betsy was found an old bass guitar in her mm-hmm. attic or something stupid like that, and I picked it up, and I remember it didn't even have like a strap holder on it. I had to put screws with washers on it and hang like a belt from it. And, and, and it went like, dude, the minute you fucking it, like, put it It on. weighed a million pounds for a sixth grader and, and to have, so my and shoulder the action would kill off the me. Fucking, dude, I, I had to gave me fingers of steel. It was just downhill dude, from there. It was which just is, unbelievable. Yeah, it was fun. So then um, you kind of started picking it up, and then yeah. I was back in Exodus. This is about 2002, is 2003. Temple of the Damned, right? Yeah, it was yeah. right, Temple of the yeah, Damned. Yeah. And then Jack has always played um, um, Yamaha basses, and yeah. you know he had an ESP for a while, and um, you know five-stringer, and um, he actually gave me a real good deal on I think I paid only 300 350 bucks for that fucking yeah. bass. Do you still have that bass? Dude, I still rock it on stage. That bass is bad as fuck. It's one of and my so, three. So I have my and, E2, my other LTD, and then that was my third backup. But it's, it's there. It, that's awesome. I'm glad you said So then I bought you that bass, and that's kind of where it happened for you. Yeah. There, you know? Yeah. And, I, I learned to play a five string, not even knowing what the five string meant. You know, right. I remember, and it, it is what it is. Sorry, I'm, you gonna call me? I'm gonna call you out, Dad. Can I get guitar lessons? Gary Holt never had guitar lessons. Figure it out. So <laughs> that's things were taught in them days. <laughs> <laughs> But it made me a good player for what it is. It's the total <coughs> meth, uh, death, meth, clock, death clock joke redone was when Murder Face gets all of his parts shown to him by Swiss Car, and he's like, "I write all your bass parts for you." I mean, that, that's what it was in the beginning. But when that new tech, mal- tech death movement kind of came in, I prided myself with following the guitar. Uh-huh. I often talk about that before I take vocals. Is other when Costa pulls a Costa and he goes off the fucking wall. I was playing his parts with him for uh-huh. the first two albums, right? And then moving forward from there. Learning to be a singer and a player at the same time as where I had to dumb down and 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 open E sometimes here and there because I wasn't used to both at times. Right, right. I, actually, I would. Yeah. I tell. I've said during when 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 I did the review. Yeah. I I, I can sing. I couldn't concentrate. I can barely concentrate yeah. on you know that. Who me that. Let have to go do something else. Yeah. So um, so then you played for about about a year, and then I remember you being fifteen. And I had to drive you to Walnut Creek. A bunch Creek of nineteen-year-olds playing a uh, bass, uh, or you tried out first, right? Yeah. And then you got I mean, the gig. <laughs> that, that entrance was nepotism. I barely knew how to do anything, but yeah, yeah that, that was, was oh well. Eh. See, you take it for what it's worth. And uh, see, I'm not a liar. I'm not I, I don't want. I, I we only tell the truth here on <laughs> the vault. That we only. But you know tell what was hard at that time? The guitar Hero was big, so everyone was a guitar player. No one owned a bass guitar. I almost got Aussied in that predicament. The fact they're like, "Oh fuck, you have an Ampeg stack and you have a bass guitar." Plus, who you know? It was like a. There was like high schoolers always hitting me up to be in bands, and like that I never even felt I was good enough to be in. But uh-huh. because the, the, the that 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 was scarce. I think that's why Nick kind of helped pick up the drums, right? Is kind. Uh, he there was there was lack of drum there was lack there, of drummers well, too. Swear, Everyone I, was again, a guitar player. That was the whole yeah. thing. I mean, there was I could have probably bought him a guitar at that yeah. Christmas, but I was more into that. You know, yeah. this way I figured, like I did, I put this band together and had all parts with me. Just the in Emperor case. had an overall scheme emperor, for Darth Vader right, and Darth like Vader too. <laughs> that's what they call me, the Emperor. When I was that's right, I don't give a shit. I'll, I'll yeah, be he the emperor. managed. You managed Oscar I, and we were like a melodic death metal like well, Nordic no, 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 band. Let you know. I'm okay, up to all right, that. let's do it. So he 
<laughs> you spoiled the emperor, so no, that's no, good. No, no. Well, okay. He he fucking uh, <laughs> he he wants to join this band, and they're like twenty minutes from where we live, or twenty five minutes up a hill, and he doesn't have his license yet. So me being that rock and roll dad I am, I Don't after I he gets the it. gig, <laughs> I take him to practice every fucking. He did. Uh, uh, 40 minutes twice out of your day every Saturday, every right? Every Saturday. Yeah, yeah, for real. An hour and a half of just driving just so I yes. can plan a band. So yes. I do very much appreciate that. Yeah, because so. I drove you, dropped you off, came home. And then you go all the way I'd back. All the way back yeah. and then picked him up. And then I would be like, I would be like, oh, fuck, I can't wait till this fucking kid gets his license. I'm getting tired. But I wanted it for you. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, you convinced him to practice at our house. Remember that? <laughs> That well, was awesome. well, we didn't have a no- we didn't have a noise ordinance, and they all drove. Everyone was cool, and it worked out. Everyone that was way. used to us having a drum set in the house. We were playing in like his second front room, Walnut Creek, California, everybody, and we were playing exactly. in his second front room with it like soundproofed and everything, you know. So, and his dad wasn't the hippest about it. He supported it. He supported, but he, but was he like, wasn't about it. Like me, he loved you the second you did make us move over there. Oh he yeah, comes up to the show, like, dude, thanks for getting him out of my house. Exactly, like, it was kind of funny. It worked. So. It, it was, yeah. And, but, but, but your mother mother gave me shit about that. It's like, why are they coming here? It's like, because... But then, I, I get it, because I gave... I think I was giving everyone shit when Nick's band started practicing. Right, that. but like, it's, just, it's just the way it was. So then... Um, shit rolls downhill. So then, um, talk about the guys in Oscar I Talk about uh, The beginning Corey. lineup? So, yeah, the first lineup. so, Corey was our drummer. Yeah. He was the oldest, yeah. I believe. Um, Freaking little Abercrombie model, yeah. fucking blondie with the, the, the muscle cut. He was a good drummer, though. We, I remember we did that Battle of the Bands... And he, uh, the, we lost the battle of the bands in Walnut Creek, but he got, they had said he was the best drummer the guy had seen in the area in a while. Corey was really good at his craft. And like one day he like just wasn't about it anymore. We were getting more progressively heavy, melodic and a lot more blast beats and stuff. And he wanted the more artsy kind of shit, I think to begin with, you know, and Nikita, Nikita, he was our our Russian wonder that that was in the band. Yeah. Yeah. He was super tall. And we even played a couple shows without him because he was like a decent tennis player. He was yeah. ranked or something. Yeah. Like he would get a tennis match like day before, like a spot notice, and he'd get in it. And we'd have to play as a three piece. That happened a couple times there. Remember you guys were all into Dragon Force when Dragon Dude, Force. Dude, that was like right when, Remember, uh, when, yeah. uh, 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 Through the Fire and Through the, the Fire and the Flames came out. But what is it? Is it in, uh, Inhumane Rampage? That's yeah. when that album came out. Yes, that was. Dude, that ruled the world. They're them, Death Clock, that whole movement. I think it yeah. was post through the Ashes of Empires. The Blackening was yes. about to come out. Yes. Metal was on a decent rise. Yeah. I, I, a lot of interviews ask me about like, oh, do you think Red Metal, where's it stand? I go, we're all chasing the dragon that was that 80s scene when you guys talk about the Ruthie's in. I call it the golden shit, era. The golden era. It's the golden era. Just like Hollywood think, and television, they yeah. all have their golden eras, you know? As far as locally, I think we lucked out with Guitar Hero coming out. I think that was a really big thing that got kids into music music one last time before EDM and hip hop took completely yeah, over. Right. So there was a lot of pizza place down the street your buddy Norbert owned. Remember that? Yeah. He would let us go over there and we'd throw shows and like two kids' teeth were getting knocked out and stuff. And yeah, it there was, was no cabaret dude, license. It was ridiculous. The, cl- the police would try to shut it down and it would just keep going. And like that was cool. Like everyone in high school would go, go do that, enjoy that within town. We didn't have to go to Oakland or something. And there was Francisco actually and, two or know. three bands in around town. Yeah, yeah. Which if you go like, like oh, I heard there was one foot you know, well, uh, one, flew, one, flew, one, flew one flew west. Turok was a big Turok, name. The um, Quick and the Dead. There was a yeah, few of them. Dissipate. Few, what was Scandals uh, Band? Uh, what were they called? I can't think of the name of them right now. They had a bunch of names, actually. That's what was cool. Uh, uh, yeah. And it kind of spawned out of that. And um, uh, now, you, at one point, you left Oscar I. Yes, yes. I got really into, I hate to say, your first love of ruin, yeah? And then also, I, I joined uh, the opportunity that your friend gave me to be in the union. Right. So, so that, yeah. that was a lot on me as a young kid. I, I graduated on a Friday, and then come that Monday, I was turning a wrench at a company, helping, helping right. tweakers out in the middle of the freaking night. Fucking tweakers. Real. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm Kurt, it's, and I still am in that branch of work today. So I'm a union air conditioning mechanic pretty much that's right and i'm a manager actually yeah <laughs> it doesn't me. and we live in california yeah, right i pay exactly. 1600 dollars for a 550 foot square yeah, exactly. box exactly who it's, can relate please no uh text me hit me up but there's but anyways no, uh, <laughs> you got a better place here is, <laughs> yeah here is um, right. but then um i started hatred and I st- and I actually used Kyle. Well, so I was the first convection of it before you had gotten interest to it because Nick and Costa were jamming. I did jam twice, I believe. There was two times that I went out and jammed again. 
between you know living with my girlfriend and 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 work i couldn't commit full time to it. Uh, that's when you got kyle i think uh, that's when you guys found drew and then that's when you guys found alex alex right yes yes so yeah. then from there i think kyle helped on a demo um and then uh, alex i don't even think he did okay i i could he probably play costa studio magicking that one or I'm, something I'm, like that i'm gonna say that costa did it <laughs> so um but yeah and then from there um i i kind of came back into the fold um and it was cool because i mean this is this is the next thing that i'm going into is you uh at that time didn't have any responsibility other than just playing bass you were yes. just a bass player you were not writing i went to work a, during the day and i played bass at really night writing in i was letting go yeah. right all. i was yeah. doing all the lyrics and singing so yeah you were just i don't think bass. the first part I even wrote came in until dawn of the new centurion i had right. one little bass like he would let me throw in there and it's kind of coastal writes all the music i straight up tell everybody that now so people kind of no reason not to people ask what what involvement does kevin have i go oh kevin helps arrange and run bandage management and operations but music gets made by Costa, and then it goes to me and nick from there from most Vogels. bands do yeah, that i mean so. gary plays all the all the rhythms it's you yeah. know yeah. Everybody knows that it's not 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 something that you know we go oh no it's 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 a collective effort I think it works better that way you know it, it's not really doesn't yeah. really matter but you now have to be intricate bass player and singer so yeah. talk about that transition over the last five years after you and Nick threw me out and then you had to become the singer and uh, Kicked. at the cut <laughs> like, we had two awesome shows paper. this is what I tell everybody I'm gonna go in right now press and play for what I've been said before we had two awesome shows lined up it was DRI in San Jose and then we are playing with Billy Milano MOD right. in, in Modesto we were so stoked for it and I think Exodus had a flash tour yeah. it was like a hey pack your bag we, we filling in happens. for somebody and we were just like bummed at practice and we're sitting there playing the instrumentals and I'm like three quarters of the way through the set and it was like we were upset we were going to have to drop on those shows and we were very excited DRI holds us highly and the promoter for the, uh, the MOD show we were supporting acts on both right. bands so we're sitting there playing and I go up to the mic and I yeah yeah I'd start doing a you and then Nick's like drops his drumsticks pretty much not you know and he looks at me he's like Dude, you sound dead on like, Dad, you could do this. So I think we arranged a few practices first. And then um, we, we kind of came with you the idea. And you're all, you're all that's fine, but I want to hear it. So you made me go buy studio yeah. time with Juan we out talked of my own to, we, we talked about yeah. that with uh, Costa a little yeah. bit about that. But I want to tell that here. Because this was my take. Yeah, That's fine. I'll give you my fucking blessing. But you can't go there and be any lesser than. Oh, totally. You have to be where I'm at. Yeah. And I know you're not necessarily a singer, but you played the tone. Now, it's been five years since you started doing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, um, what was it like trying to find your voice? You know what I mean? So, find your tone for your own. At because first it was, you do resemble me. Yeah. But, but it's you'd not the same. also, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. even do that. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like. It's a little different. So I emulated you at first, Monkey See, Monkey Do. The grandma noise. Have you gone into the grandma noise yet? No. I mean, where where the vocal tone comes? Yeah, mother! You know oh, what I mean? Oh, so yeah, my mother. Have you gone yeah, into Maryland yet? I mean, that's no, part of it. I think I've gone into <laughs> Maryland. Everyone can get a Star Wars prequel on this really quick. I guess so. you could. Yeah, yeah, a lot of my voice, where it comes from, is my mother used to have this <laughs> high-pitched scream, and she would call my name. Yeah. And it would be like, Steve! <laughs> And that was the and all yeah. I did was him and what the fuck are you and your brother doing? Exactly. And so a lot of my vocal tone came from God damn it. <laughs> right. And it would just be this. She could say God damn it for like a half an hour. She would be like, that bitch, rest God in peace. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. And like you knew something was going on. So and if the few yeah. She would mind that sound. Anyone hear Shroud of Urine in that at all right there? That's you know what I mean? My mother yeah. talked, and that's just the way it was. Yeah. And um, uh, so a lot of my voice said, so I guess if you're pulling <laughs> off the Maryland derivative, I mean, that's, my it's that Maryland. muscle for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Maryland derivative. Yeah, for sure. I heard it practicing. I was imitating her when I was 11 years old. Yeah, and then you know, we all did it. You, I mean, our cousins, your, oh, your brothers, sons. It was like we call each other Maryland as an insult. Oh, that's an I can say bitch, love you, but rest in peace. But, but, but it was but, like, if you're being a bitch, you're oh, being you're Maryland. Maryland. Oh, if, don't you call me Maryland. Fist fight words. 
fist because, fight or the oh, cousins have scrapped many a times over that oh, word. Oh, you know you, what I mean? Say like, it to your sister. Oh, God. She'll Madison and I like, don't you call me Marilyn? <laughs> so, anyways, that was the derivative of that. that, that, that is monkey see, monkey do. A little bit of Marilyn in there. And my, my teenage wet dream has always been the Black Dahlia murder. I really thought when they came out, Trevor had the, the three vocal tones was awesome. He could tell a story in three I, different lights with I the love same, Trevor. With the same vocals. I've become good friends with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Know, since, yeah, which since I'm a little jelly about. Really but you usually tan him the phone. I got to tell him how his new tracks are and shit. Yeah, I dig He's him. pretty cool. Good dude. Um, but yeah, it kind of that's Black where Tire. I emulated my lows and kind of add a little flavor to it. Also, also, I mean, Oscar I was a death metal band, so I would be one of the yo 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 in the backgrounds, one of the the, the lows, yes. right? So that kind of was already there, implemented, and then here and there you'll hear me do a Tom Array, a kind of quick mid tone that I punch out, kind of keep it lively, and I I would say that's the perfect sandwich of what I emulate my vocals after, and that's just the sound I wanted to go with, right? So. Um, that's kind of how that came out. And then learning to play and do it at the same time was a completely different battle. Okay, I talk mean, about that. Tell, so talk about chewing gum the, and the, walking so, at the same fucking right, time. So the first Boy, time I did that, I, was, I stopped playing when I said my brother dropped the sticks and looked at me, and that was when the idea came together. Well, then after that, it was like, okay, we went into the next practice. That was the goal of practice. Yeah, we have fun at practice, but there's a, nah, we've got the schedule, buddy. Click, click, you know. But um, we'll go from there. And uh, we, 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 I went in singing and attempting to play bass the first time. I'm thinking so hard that I'm putting my net back out straight. I don't know if anyone remembers this that incident in the band. And I gave myself a backache trying to sing and like proper and play. It was just too much going on at the same time. My back was, I, I, I have a, a dis, partly disintegrated disc, right, right, as you right. know. So I, I, I was singing on it weird. And dude, I was like bed bound for a week. It was like, oh my God. The biggest kick in the ball is you're trying to go up and take your dad's spot. I go into my first full practice and sing for 45 minutes. I get a rushing migraine. And then my freaking back is out for a week. I'm like, well, this is, I just like, like the world biggest idiot at that point but as you, you kind of you, and you did i mean i was talked to you after you were in that process yeah and you blew your voice out so oh, many times. you were on tour in the first few shows that i did still i had gotten past the point of confidence that i'm talking about now but you could see my vein in my forehead and you call me up the next morning i'm still sleeping you're up because you're in a different time zone you're like you're pushing too hard i can hear you i can see it in your pictures you're pushing too hard Just you know relax. i would still have a migraine when he Just was saying that relax so, it, it was a lot going on and i actually worked it out with, I would watch a lot of Lexi Laiho, people that play guitar, not necessarily bass, Rob Tom Fred, Rea. Tom Morea. I'd watch YouTube videos and, and see, You, I remember you said this thing, you're like, just be Tommy, just be Tommy. Tommy don't give a fuck the whole time he's on stage. He just does it. And then I jammed with uh, with the guys on Oscar Eye. They, they formed another, with another band, they call themselves Lyceum now. I actually played bass for Lyceum for like four or five months there. I was yeah. doing double duty uh -huh. and working. I just had like a bunch of free time in my life at that point. I was working nights or something. Right. So it was like easy. And he He's all, your guitar has to be autonomic and you're live in your vocals. That's how it's done. So I, I took that into process, muscle memory. And then at that point, the singing is always live to me. Uh -huh. So that's how I do it. Now everyone does it different, right? I, I, mean, I would think you would have your own. Yeah. I, the way I approach, the way I sing and everything I do, the mechanics of my tongue placement, how hard I push, how yeah. much air I pull in, where I cock my jaw, yeah. how I turn my head yeah there's all these different things that go into it that i do second nature now so that i don't lose my voice i did that tour in uh december uh, of last year i had to play 17 shows in a row mm -hmm. so i can't lose my voice so yeah. are you at a capacity now son where you can play a show every other day or yeah, every totally. day you can we 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 well, a couple months ago we had like a three show run within uh, all within oh, a right. week or two of each i mean within for patriot times close distance to each other and that was fine i don't know how rob flynn goes for three hours i have to i, I and you know i used to you gave me shit because i have to pop ibuprofen well my secret and i kind of felt bad about it so i really thought i was not fucking up but like that's not how you do it everyone's different right if that then works I, for I you heard, it's what works for you i heard an interview with dave Grohl. i heard dave Grohl does the two ibuprofen too so i was like okay this is not a uncommon thing that guys do get because migraines from singing they, I you get know it. let me tell you something when yeah. i i know to the point um it, like in the studio when i'm recording yeah. Or on the stage, if I've reached that point. Uh -huh. And once you've reached that point, anytime you sing or push out yeah. anything, it starts pounding. Oh, yeah. And, and I don't get headaches. You know what it is for me? It's when I stop. When, when the blood pressure's there, it's good. When I let go, it's like, oh, fuck. Now, now, now <laughs> I don't bad. get headaches. Yeah, I never I get them ever, ever in my life. Yeah. 
but if I push too hard live or I've sung too much, say I'm in the studio and we've done it a hundred times. Oh, I remember you doing Tempo of the Damned. You'd had to drive back from Half Moon Bay yes, yes. after working all day and just, hey, good night. Like just straight to bed. You sound like Ace. Yeah, right. And you had the horse voice. Ace. Ace. And so, so I, I, totally. I, I, I and, and it's because, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing so hard that, and, and you need, the only thing that fixes that? Time. Sleep. Oh, oh gotta, sleep, you yeah. You gotta fall oh, totally. asleep and let your brain Relax and bring it back down. Yeah. And then it, when you wake up the morning, all over again. Totally. So talk about, you. did you write much lyrics on? Yeah, on, so our original agreement was you were going to write all the lyrics. You were going to be the pseudo yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Let, let's just get the old man to do it all. He what was going to be the pseudo writer. I was going to be the voice because I didn't want to lose that U.S. But my right. whole take was, was like, you know what? At first. Fuck this shit. I'll get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how it's done because remember I show you how I yeah. did it. And you need to write your own lyrics. You're going to feel them and sing them much yeah. better if you write them yourselves. Yeah. And I don't want... And and, 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 and it, it was another thing of, okay, you're going to go on your own now. Then you're going to go on your own now. Yeah. You know. So I had, I think... Uh, yeah, at first you had told me that, but that Frank, quickly changed. It Frankenstein, wasn't, yeah. Frankenstein was one I You I had wrote. that. Okay, so you gave me the chorus to Frankenstein, but I wrote that whole song right, around right, it. Right. I think you had... The melody of One Less Hell, we gave yeah. it to Costa. He wrote some abomination the FBI would be knocking on the door about us about. Nice. So had to change the lyrics on that one. That was me. And then you did write In the Mind of the Mad, though. Yeah. You and Nick sat down. Yeah. Nick had some involvement on it. But I think that was the one song you actually did. Like We had like three left to write, and you and Nick wrote one uh-huh. on a day out. And that uh-huh. was that one's very you, too. The way like you're off beat on f- certain things there isn't how I would have done it. Uh-huh. So that's what's cool. It kind of still, you still linger on there as you do linger on like like the Testament albums and everything still, still moving linger forward. On That's what I'm the saying. The new Testament album. Linger. I will be lingering on that one. <laughs> I, know. I think I have three songs that I linger. They're with one right now, right? Aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're there they're, right it's, now. It's almost done. Oh, okay, cool. It's coming yeah. in January. I was told. Oh, I think it's coming out in January. See, another so. thing is like oh, they're at Trident Studios. Oh, they're with one, right? You know what I mean? Right. Uncle Juan. Everybody's, Juan. everybody's Uncle with Uncle Juan. No, we love Sure, he's with Uncle Juan. I've had him in here before. Yeah, I know. I've seen his Great. Totally. And we'll have him in here again. So. Talk about recording the vocals. Yeah, on that. That was cool. With uh, so all the other instruments were recorded with Cody Fuentes, and then we went to Juan for mixing, mastering all the all and the all the, the bow on the top and the vocals. And you, and you Juan was a vocalist, right. so and he did a little bit of snippet studio, final minute reorganizing and re restructuring on a few things here and there. I mean, I'm never one to dog anyone for the credit they deserve, right? He, he did help me be a vocalist on this. Talk album. about working with Juan. What did you think? Oh, good. I love Juan. I've loved yeah. him through every single album. A, process. He was, he was, on, he was the fact that we had the hidden, right? Exactly. So he was in vile. He was a singer before the fact that we're comfortable with him. You can just go in and be yourself around somebody. You know what I mean? That, that's the, the, the environment there is cool. He's in our backyard. And like I said, he's always been uncle Juan. You know what right. I mean? Not, not necessarily. I'd say that to his face or anything. I repeatedly say to him but he's that close to us i've always known one which is cool right right um and it, it just gives that gives that feel for it after a while that you're just hey tell me the thing you hey, no dude that fucking sounds like shit someone you can talk to like that and they're not gonna right. Walk, all right all right dude slam it out again then you know what i mean so and he's open to what you have to say he wasn't too controlling and definitely helping you out with uh he wants the best for the product to be exactly the best regardless yeah that's what's so. great he's not a guy in there just trying to pull dollars and go oh yeah it sounds great we'll fix yeah. it in the mix you know he <laughs> yeah, wants totally. it and he wants so. you to be the best you could be. But I mean, yeah. it's here we are now and it's like the final product. Again, you know, Walter and I have already reviewed this, you know, yeah. it was on a couple of days so what'd you ago. Think? Overall. I'm the better than the, what we the first it, the progression is. I think and I said it in the review. And don't think he's ever kissed my ass. I missed a tackle in football. He straight up to saw you missed the guy or saw, saw you missed him. So what's up? <laughs> why are you not why are you not Yo, you did oh, you great, missed your son. Gap. You missed your no, gap. It's not like why that. did you miss your gap there? It's like, you know, they'd win the game and he I'd blew be blew your yeah, ass but, up. But on the third play from scrimmage, when that guy blew right past you. Why did you you, you fudge that? Oh, it well, was never sugarcoated. Oh, so before bad. we enter this too conversation. Bad. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, spare the rod and spoil the child. You know what I mean? So yeah. that that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, I think like I, I I said before I even said to Costa, the first three song sequencing to me. Uh huh. You know, because the opener is my favorite. I'm really? sorry. I just think it is just fucking yeah. uh, absolutely way to open a record. Yeah, yeah. And the first three are, and I and I I I compared it to. 
you know, bonded Exodus and then there were none. Because yeah. to me, that's wow, wow. The balance there is just yeah, yeah. like, you know, bonded comes out. Many, and, yeah, and many Exodus people are saying it's it's number one so far yeah, as far as we're concerned. Now, I don't know if that's a Oh, I, I'll say no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's, it's showed I'm, I'm a not hurting. I'm just saying what I'm being told. It is a musical progression. Yeah. It is a playing progression. It is a vocal progression. I, I think it's definitely better than Heroes of Origin and Dawn of the New Century. Thank and, you. And, and I think that it's because of every bit of the elements. You're all in your own. Because the record is being released now, you and Costa and Nick have been together for the last five years doing this. Yeah. So to me, it's like, you know, you, you guys know each other backwards and forwards. More so than when we did Heroes of Origin, Donna. You've had more time under your belt together. Well, I should have room with now. one of the assholes, but yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. But totally. you know what I mean? Band chemistry moving forward. So, so. It, it, it worked out. So you vocally on the album, Costa guitar-wise, and your brother drum-wise has, has really showed, exemplified the musicianship that you guys have done with hard practice yeah. and hard work. So again, you could have put this record out and this record could have been, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it's I all right. and I yeah, that's pretty good. There's that's, a couple of good songs on it. That all was one thing I think any relief. On this one. Thank you. I, I think that's one thing that anyone who was a random jamoke, sorry to say, putting an album out wouldn't have to. There was already scrutiny under it. There was sure. there was a par to make sure. on that. A was but following that. I know that. Up, well, I, know that I had to up do with what we we currently did, I and have, that the nepotism that oh you're just helping shove this album out because you have a name somewhere in this side of the music industry. You know what I mean? So it, it, it there, holds its own. Yeah. It holds its own. And, but and I, that's good to hear. But I know you know I had to take over for Bailoff. Yeah. So there was. I guess I mean, you've been in was, the shoes before. Yeah. I've been there. I knew yeah. it. Pleasures had to be that. My live show had to be that. Yeah. So to me, it was like almost the same thing, and and you and you did it really well. Um, I all I can say is, fucking awesome, fucking job. Dang. Especially from you, like I said, that's not a common thing. But hey, you're you're yeah, honest no, in your mean, assessments. And just being that honest means a with lot. Now. And that's that's all I can tell anybody. Anybody watching this too, we, we don't make any money playing metal. Any money we make goes right into the band for more merch, right. gas, Everybody transportation, in the band works and stuff. Uh, you know, right, we all have our own jobs. This is our hobby. Some people like to go take be a photographer. Some people like to go ride motorcycles. Like this is what our family does. We play in a band on we Friday nights. Music. We go crack a beer, do what we got to do on the off record, and and freaking you know what I mean, and, and go play some music in a room somewhere in Oakland, California. Right, and that's what we do. And if people enjoy do the, what what we do. That, that's where it'll never lead, lose its organicity. It loses organics, right? You know what I mean? That it's it's it, this is pure enjoyment. There's no push from you. There's no push from a record label. There's no Britney Spears manager breathing down There's our no throat pressure. making a There's quota. No pressure. This, this yes. is 100 percent a hobby. This is no that pressure. That has gotten a little momentum. Which well, is cool. hopefully we can get some momentum and change that uh, demographic. I know it is yeah. very hard when you look at the younger bands today, and I do because I've been in this business for totally. now 35 fucking years. You know, professionally and and and. It, you know, for us to still hit it and, you know, make a living at it, we still have to be very on top of our game. So yeah. for other bands that are like on the next level or the level before us, you know, and there's bands out there. Um, we played, I've had them on my show. There's a great band out there. They tour all the time. Ex Mortis mm -hmm. out of Los yeah. Angeles. And man, those guys hit it so hard all right. constantly. And they're just trying to break the barrier. And basically that's what you have to do. So if you have the luxury of, you know, doing it, you know, like you guys are doing it. Because, again, At all four status. of you work yeah. it. Yeah. Two of you guys are bosses. Run the joints. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's not like you just can't turn it off and, no. okay, this is we off. We can't and, come home hungry. But, and, and that's another thing kind of back to your first one when I was talking about earlier is like, okay, what, what was it like growing up with you? And I'm not going to say any names, but seeing some of these guys coming towards the downs, the bell curve of their career. Sorry, nothing stays up forever. No. And coming down and no retirement, no medical, no. And no it's out. like and people call us crazy for like, dude, I, if I were in your shoes, you're wasting it. You know, hate mail. Like, you need to be on the road 24 7. Because they're fans. And, and that's but what that's they what want. But that's what I'm saying is, you, is they, don't, they don't understand it right. 100%. There's a whole never so. another d demographic yeah. to this. So we are here because it is Hatriot Week on Zetro's Toxic Vault. <laughs> um, um, thanks for coming in, son. We're going to keep awesome. pumping this all fucking week cool. long. Sounds good to me, man. You feeling good about this? Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked too. about it. I want to hear from everybody. If you, if you yeah, listen so to we, it, shoot a message. Leave, leave the comments. Leave it on yeah. on them. Um, obviously, you can go to you know Hatred uh, Facebook, yeah. all that kind of stuff, and then um, um, subscribe and share my channel, obviously, and um, we can get you guys in here. I got to get you and your brother here. We can just talk. 
just not even. You got to get music. a triangle shaped table. Sousa and we can just stories. have a Sousa brawl. Get your sister in here. Yeah. We'll talk about what dinner was like, how fucking your we brother should... would do shit. And then he would say, uh, what? I didn't do it. And your sister would be like, he's doing that. I'd be like, Nicholas, I'm not doing it. And then yeah. I'd turn my head and he'd do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So there's We a need lot to buy those of... Simpsons things before that. The button where they're all yeah, shocking right. oh, each I other. I love that. that would I be love the that. Best. That would be great. Because what we'd be <laughs> shocking each other you guys constantly so yeah, we'll do an episode like that so all hatred Definitely. all week long july 26th in, from days into darkness fucking drops to the world five years in the making motherfuckers the wait is five over time. so we'll keep it up keep watching episodes Definitely. all week for this shit remember friday it drops Check so it we'll see you tomorrow in the vault more hatred